In chapter 11 you learn to work with the grid, and I found that a lot of students have a hard time knowing where to start. Um, they usually get the concept of using a grid, um, they certainly understand how to show rulers by pressing Command R on the keypad or using the view menu. Um, dragging guides out of the rulers is usually not a problem, um, but the issue is usually just, you know, what, where do I start on the page in terms of lying down a grid and um, how can I make all of the elements on my page relate to one another. So um, my recommendation is to start with the largest item on the page. Um, other than that, maybe it's the, the, the item that you want to have uh, be your most prominent focal point. Oftentimes that is, you know, tends to be the largest item as well. Um, but if you start with the largest item on the page, um, then you can place that and make some decisions about it um, and then work with that as a, a way of understanding the space. So in our case, we place this large heading text, lorem ipsum, and um, in a box that is sort of um, set on top of. And once those items were placed, we take we looked at the rulers and we pulled some guides um, and made some decisions. So a lot of times you'll place something on the page and you'll find that you've placed it a little bit off, like maybe it's something like that. And so you take a look at that and say, oh, well, that's really close to the two inch mark, or it's really close to an inch and a half, or an inch and three quarters, or whatever. Um, and so, you know, you might um, modify things just to make the math a little bit more easy, um, or at least easy to, to round. Um, once you have something large on the page, you can then also look at, um, you know, not only the horizontal space, but the vertical space, um, and make a decision. So in this case, the vertical space ended up being um, here, going from 16 on the bottom to 14 and a half, so the vertical space I began with was about two and a half inches. I recommend working with some just uh, dummy shapes, you know, in, in the in the pre-digital days, we would actually, you know, you would have used uh, some way of marking space, whether it be lead or something else. Um, and so digitally, you might as well do the same thing, draw a box and use it as a shape, just as a as a way of marking some space. And then um, for this exercise, um, once you, you you know drew your first box like this, and I'm just going to use the option key to click and drag and make a duplicate, um, then you can take that box and copy it at half its size, half its size, half its size, half its size. Um, you can do that as much as you like, but this will just give you some other shapes that you can use as placeholders, and then you'll know that if you use those shapes as placeholders, you're making um, relationships with all of those placeholder spaces on the page because there's a mathematical relationship there. Um, so you could, you know, hold shift and copy and paste this, and if you wanted to, you could um, bring this to the halfway point just by dragging. You could also use the scale tool, whatever works for you. So I'm holding the option key as I um, click and drag and the shift key to keep them in a straight line and then I'm just bringing this down till it meets the midpoint. So something like this. Now this just gives me a bunch of, um, I just think of these as, you know, dummy spacers. Um, and then I can use those throughout the page um, as I'm working the page. So um, that's exactly what we did. You know, we worked the page, we added a text box, and then we just, you know, chose one of these as a way of marking the space, um, and then modified the text box accordingly. So maybe this text box, when it was first brought in, it lived something like here or there. Um, we just, you know, bring in a, a spacer box and then bring the text box down to meet it. And an exercise like this, we're lucky because we have that flexibility in a sort of real world situation. You're going to end up with a word count that's very specific and you just sort of have to deal with, um, with those types of specifics. But this at least gives you a way of starting to think, think about the space, the negative space on the page, um, and how to make the negative space have a mathematical relationship to everything that's happening in the positive space on the page. Um, once you've used your spacers, you can then go ahead and pull some guides. So uh, my recommendation is to set the largest item first, set up some spacers, um, use those as you're placing items on the page, and then pull your guides out after you've got a few items on the page. Um, so it's a really um, sort of simplified way of working, but it, it will ensure that you do have um, some relationships on the page that are at least um, at least mathematical and so that will feel um, there will be a sense of harmony you know you'll feel a sense of harmony on the page by doing that